Welcome to episode number 62 of the Keep Up Podcast. Someday I'll catch up with that. um (laughs) oh what's up tim not much dog cool (laughs) uh welcome to the keep up we are a podcast we talk about things and stuff as well i remember the time when we didn't talk about stuff Mm, we went through that transition and we're like now we talk about stuff right and it's like is it time to add the stuff or yeah not? and it, it's like a good pie it is a great pie and at first right. when we were a pie mm. we were a quiche because because mm, we right. didn't add the stuff yeah yeah yeah. And yeah. Then the stuff came in we're right. like we're the keep up pie mm-hmm. and that's why we call it the keep up. yeah I mean, we don't say pie but it's like it's there it's implied i so. mean you when you eat a pie you don't say i'm gonna eat apple pie you're gonna right. say i'm gonna eat apple right that's how everyone so when they listen to the yeah. keep up cut me like, a piece of strawberry yeah everyone knows that nobody unanimous <laughs> yeah nobody wants just a, sh- a piece of a strawberry it's right. obviously pie yeah cut me a piece of chocolate banana cream everyone gets that everybody knows what that means cut me a piece of big toe that's what i'm saying pie duh yeah Sorry, I said it. I feel dumb for even saying it. I know. It just made it awkward, lie. Brett. Um, uh, reflections. Reflections. Please, please. Uh, a moment to reflect. Uh. Ready? I have yep. a list this week. Oh, a list. It's well, going to le- be the illness. I actually have one as well. This is my section where I lament past failures. <laughs> and the one time... <laughs> It is. It's uh, it's yours. You you're the one who pays attention to the past. I'm the future guy. You're the <laughs> yeah. past. That's how it goes. But this one time, I decided to take a peek. I just looked yeah. in the the rearview mirror, if you will. That's fine. And I was actually alerted by someone, by a, a faithful listener, <laughs> Edward Payson. He uh, noticed that I was false in my statement about. <laughs> I feel very professional right now. I know. What do you? I apologize. Appealing to the court. <laughs> um. So the Michael Phelps shark race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So uh, I don't remember what I said specifically, but basically I was under the impression that he actually raced a real shark. Like 20 minutes after we finished yeah. the podcast, it it came out that it was a CGI shark. I didn't watch it. I was told I was using a firsthand yeah. account to tell the story. You didn't actually say one way or the other. We just didn't mention that it was CGI. Was- I hadn't watched it either. And mm-hmm. I actually have this on my list because I was listening to a podcast afterwards mm-hmm. and they like they were so angry that it was all cgi sharks yep so so all of them were not just the last one no he didn't race any sharks see i'm learning something new every day yeah i thought it was just the last yeah because you said you you had missed it but you walked in at the tail end of the show yeah very end and they were just talking about like statistics and all this stuff. so you just saw that they won which is that or that he had beat all the sharks except Except, the great yeah that's that's which is all you said so Mm -hmm. you didn't say that he actually raced them you just said that he beat the sharks. yeah that was the big thing about it was uh how was he gonna race them that was the whole which is such a freaking bait and switch it really no pun intended but i'll allow it that's a good one um it's just so ridiculous. It like is. that's everyone was talking about. How are they going to do this? How are they going to do this? Right. How can they prevent the shark from eating him? Right. Um, and yeah, they they never once said it was going to be CG. They never yeah. even talked about it. They're just like, watch him race the shark. And yeah. it's like, he didn't even really race a shark. No. What they had. You know what? You did say that they had the shark distracted because you couldn't figure out how to say focus distracted. Focus distracted. Remember we had that conversation? Not at all. You were like <laughs> you were like, I guess they kept the shark like focused or distracted so he wasn't like, ooh, yummy human oh, or something was- like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it ended up being bait, right? It he was, was just well, there they wasn't really a shark. No, I know, but uh, the word I was trying to look for—he was being baited or oh, something. Oh yeah, yeah, I think so. Like but that. yeah, yeah, that's the impression that I got was yeah. that he was the shark was chasing something. Right. Uh, but freaking none of that happened. Not how know. it happened. I freaking no. that's so. what you get for not actually watching it yourself. That's crazy that they they CGI'd it. I know. I feel like it's really like it's very. Um, deceptive yeah to it be is like he's gonna race a shark mm-hmm. and you're like that sounds awesome let's he, see it man versus literally beast doesn't race a single shark nope not at all so they calculated the times yes right? they showed him oh i saw footage after shark looks awful may i add um it's not even good cgi no it's it's like meh um so basically what they did was uh record him 
just swimming like he jumps off a boat and goes swimming basically yeah they record his speed and then the footage they use they cgi'd in a shark like they put it in and as they were using that footage of him they put the shark in and they were they used his speed to determine how fast like it was average like how do you even know to trust what it's so stupid it it was just such a faulty thing weren't even sharks literally involved no they could have been like a penguin race it really could have you just cgi'd penguins yeah that would have been interesting you think penguins are faster than sharks i think shark week's getting lame that's what i think i've never really been a fan ever ever dude when it started it was so dope i didn't even watch it then it's because you were a baby yeah i was too busy watching telebubbies oh did you watch that show teletubbies yeah oh that is so scary that's a great show the baby son the baby son yeah (laughs) no i don't (laughs) i was confused did you know the teletubbies had babies there are baby teletubbies and the the adult teletubbies i I don't know if it's a new thing i just saw it online recently i don't like that at all yeah it's like four teletubby babies and they're scary how do you make a teletubby baby i thought they were all brothers and sisters so uh i certainly was on a confusing train ride (laughs) I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I still am. We need um, to just stop talking about Teletubbies. I'm going to have nightmares. Telly babies. All right. You ready? Yeah. So Film these are these. Yeah. We're okay. reflecting. These aren't actually like mistakes or anything, mm-hmm. but I was listening back to episode 60 and 61. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a couple things. So one I had said in, uh, I forget which was the episode we talked about the headphones. Was that last episode? I think it was. Yeah. The last that was one. the last one. Yeah. So I, I spoke about these headphones that I have the jams, mm-hmm. right? these and uh and and these headphones are bluetooth headphones and i said that the pause button didn't work Mm -hmm. it does work oh a correction it does well i don't know i just hit it the other day on (laughs) reflex because (laughs) i someone was talking to me with my headphones on which have you experienced this phenomenon where even if you had headphones on like someone's gonna talk to you oh always if you don't have headphones on yeah it doesn't matter people assume that you either have one out of your ears your ear or it's like turned I don't off understand. for some reason dude i'll have headphones on mm-hmm. holding my ipad like clearly watching something yeah and someone will you'll just hear like <laughs> and then you look up and they're looking right at you they're like why like, weren't you listening to me do you see nothing there's no eye contact <laughs> my always, ears are covered i always tap i always like hey i need to talk you, to you have so to on the shoulder because why would you not tap you need to tap. I mean, I guess a lot of people assume they're not noise canceling headphones. Or you just say, just be like, hey, Brett. Yeah. And then I'll be like, what? Now my attention Slap you. has changed. Mm-hmm. Who's slapping who in this scenario? The one without the headphones slaps the headphone wear. Something. Yeah. Don't just start talking. Okay. I'd rather be slapped for attention <laughs> than to have someone just then to look up realizing I missed an entire conversation. <laughs> That I was not a part of. Well, as long as you weren't responding, it should be okay. But you thought I was a part of. Right. I'm responding. Like, as long as the person with the headphone is responding. So someone was trying to talk to me, <laughs> so I just hit pause, and it paused. And you know what I think it is? Mm-hmm. My phone, after a while, like, it'll, like, go on standby mode, kind of. Mm-hmm. No, and it'll just turn off and... Yeah, but things will still be playing. In yeah, the and I think sometimes it doesn't register the headphone thing oh so you think if you press it a bunch of times it'll if if i um yeah i don't know if i had to like wake it up or whatever but mm-hmm. i had been holding my phone recently press play and put my phone down mm-hmm. and then i hit the pause button on the headphones and it worked so i'm just saying the jam transit headphones that i have yeah the pause button does work just in case their reps are checking out the keep up and they're like <laughs> bro you what? said the pause button doesn't work it does it does him. it does work that's yes. my bad no, i'm glad you um, fixed your mistake but i did get my new dowtronics old headphones. headphones and beautiful oh so good oh so good i freaking awesome. love them um all right second one yep we had a discussion what is the opposite of a receiver is it a transmitter yeah yeah i could have looked it up but i decided not to just so i could present it like this yes um yeah i guess because you transmit a signal right and then you receive the signal is that what it is i mean it really we depends. were talking about the bluetooth right right reaching. and it's like what is the opposite of receiving right um i guess it depends on what sense you're talking about it well we were, we're talking, talking about the bluetooth like if, right so the uh receiver is what's receiving the bluetooth signal so right your phone in this case i guess transmits the signal the headphones transmits the f- the phone receives. No, got to be the other way around because your headphones are playing stuff from your phone, right? But you also have to connect it to your phone first. So it transmits, 
receives. Oh, interesting. But then it's we're switches. in like different territory now. <laughs> we're going deep here. We're going to a club sub technically, sandwich. Okay, say I'm play- <laughs> say I'm playing music, right? Yes. That's coming from my phone. Mm-hmm. So my phone. So it transmits, receives. The output is the headphones, right? And but the he- headphones are input to the phone. So it connects to the phone, and then the phone transmits, yeah. and those receive. So it. <laughs> it does a swap, basically. Yeah. But the Bluetooth signal mm-hmm. is transmitted. I think that's the word we were looking for. Because to transmit is mm-hmm. to cause something to pass on from one place or person to another. Okay. So I think it's a transmitter. Yeah, that sounds that sounds good to me. I can't imagine another word anyways. I sat there and thought about it because mm-hmm. I was listening through the podcast and we had that conversation and I'm like, what is that There word? has to be a There's word. There's got to be one. That's what I got. All right. All right. I got oh, one more. Yeah. I got one more. Okay. We were talking about, what did you just say? Sorry. I talked over you. I don't even know. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't even matter. Um, <laughs> you brought up Iron Fist. Yes. And I said, um, I almost asked you a question and mm-hmm. I was like, hold up. I got a thing. Remind me that I have a thing. And I totally didn't remind. And you. I didn't remember either. I, I, I'm never good at that. Iron Fist. Yes. I love this. I was going to say, <laughs> where does it fall in the lineup for you? So far, we've got. Now, I know you haven't finished it, right? Yes. Okay. So far, we've got. Daredevil, Daredevil 2, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist. Okay. Um, well, okay. <laughs> After the first three episodes. Uh, okay. Let yeah. me ask you this. Would yes. you prefer to answer the question in TV? Sure. Do you have stupid questions? Yes. Let's go to stupid questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Brett. Uh, so I was thinking about this the other day. What is the worst title you can make for a movie that doesn't involve language or something sexual or anything. The worst title? Like like it's a bad title or it's like offensive. Like, like cringy. Like if you cringy? hear it, you're like, Ugh, why um, did they name it like that? So mine, Uncle Tony's Sock Puppet Party. Oof, it's definitely uncomfortable. <laughs> it's certainly. But you could also do the worst one, I guess. doesn't have to be What cringy. about like um, the sexy Nazi? <laughs> That makes me really uncomfortable. That is very uncomfortable. I think there's a lot more people into that than you think, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I was going to say the happy Nazi, because that's also. That's pretty dark, too. Yeah. What about. But maybe what's the story? Maybe it's intriguing. All right. So this is the happy Nazi. The happy. Yeah. Let's steer clear of the sexy Nazi. Okay. Sexy Nazi. That's a sequel. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, <laughs> that's a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so the happy Nazi. Yeah. Uh, you star. Or it's starring Matthew McConaughey. Clearly. And. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and Will Smith. Um, and they are in World War II China for some reason. Okay. Um, and so the Nazis. <laughs> why are we laughing at Nazis? Um, so Matthew McConaughey plays the Nazi. Right. And uh, Will Smith plays. Oh, it's plays, not Will Smith? You know, Will, <laughs> Will, Smith, Will Smith plays a Chinaman. Uh. And, <laughs> and so. Matthew McConaughey visits China <laughs> in World War II. Is like, hey, I need to learn happiness. Mm. So the Chinese guy is like, dude, I got some happiness. Because Will Smith was in the pursuit of happiness, so he already has this. Right, 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 right. That's the main idea. Yeah. So he t- puts him through 30 years is of- Is this a sequel to Pursuit of Happiness? No, this is actually a prequel. A prequel. Yes. It's a prequel, yeah. Yeah, Will Smith was in China, but right. then he goes to America later mm-hmm. on. Um, yeah. And so Matthew McConaughey. I wonder how the time yeah, lines up. <laughs> you know, I believe Pursuit of Happiness takes place in 1936. Yes. But an alternate reality. Right. And so. We're getting into X-Men timelines here. Yes, exactly. Uh, Matthew McConaughey finds love. Mm. In China. In China. Mm-hmm. But this is an Austrian woman. Right. Um, because he's a Nazi, he can't love her. And this is what leads into the sexy Nazi. Sexy Nazi, <laughs> because then eventually he convinces her to become a Nazi. Oh, And geez. that's why he's happy. He learns true happiness is through love. Oh. But by convincing her to become a Nazi, he right. became happy. So it's really, I mean, it's a romantic drama. Mm-hmm. And it's about his happiness. And it's a complicated layered story. It is. Because you know, the backdrop is what really keeps people there, you know. World right. War Two, yeah. Nazis, Will Chinese Smith. people, Will Smith, you know. Yeah. It's just, it's all that. It's all everything is. It's all there. Yeah, it is. Everything you want is there, and the pieces are put together just yeah. in a, a 
glorific way. Right. It's like all the puzzle pieces are there, mm -hmm. but you push it together like you smushed pieces together to yeah. don't go there, but you glued them. So they're there. Right. And they're all set. And Sexy Nazi, yeah. you know, adds a lot of pieces from mm -hmm. different puzzles. Right. So you're still making a picture. Right. A hideous one. It's awful. But it's there. It's there. And, and no know, one's happy about it. No. No one wants the picture to be there. No. It's really, it's upsetting by the time you finish it's Sexy It's very, Nazi. very sad to look at. Yeah. But he's happy. He's happy. And that's Which, what matters. Are you happy for him, though? I mean, Find out next week on Dragon Ball Z. There you go. Is how um, that movie ends. Yes. And we haven't seen third yet but it is a trilogy yes uh what is the name of the third one i it's it's leaving me right um now. the uh, fancy nazi ah the fancy nazi yeah. of course so is this when he becomes well he a waiter he yes oh, it okay. is um and it's because he is uh he is a widower widower by the end of oh that's uh, spoiler alert yeah it's spoiler freaking alert. a Sorry about that. No, I'm upset. I'll cut that out. Yeah. Um, and mostly because I clearly have a hard time saying the word. Nazi. And um, no, that one came out pretty clean, oh, okay. actually. And uh, just he, he's single. So he's looking for, you know, he's in New York. Does Will Smith come back? Yeah. And this what is, year is this? Um, when was Hitch? Hitch was 2004. Yeah. So it's around that time. Okay. And Will Smith um, is reprising his role. Yeah. As yeah. Hitch. What yeah. was his name of the movie? Hitch. Hitch. Okay. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it just the story progresses from there. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't want to tell you the entire movie. You got to mm -hmm. go watch it. Yep. So the trilogy. Yeah. Happy Nazi, sexy Nazi, fancy Nazi. Yeah. I'm excited. I am indifferent I... because I'm not sure what is okay to be excited about. Everything, Brett. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so sexy nazi is the cringiest movie title it's maybe not the cringiest um how about so what, what were the criteria again not so not using like foul language mm -hmm. or it can well no sexual but you can say sexy but what would make it <laughs> <laughs> well i guess it could be sexual but um because they, everyone's got different tastes so you could say the big so it toe. So depends. <laughs> yeah, be, that could be. And that could be sexual. Someone could be like, oh, that's very sexy. Yeah, that's what I love. And I would be like, okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 I know. How do you respond to that if they're like, oh, that's sexy. Oh, that's sexy. Like very seriously. Yeah. Like oh, just in mm. casual conversation. Like what's that, um, conversation. what's that Harry Potter spinoff movie called? Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Like what if you, you were like, oh, look at this title. And someone's just like, ooh, that is sexy. That would throw me through a like, loop, I oh. think. Fantastic beast and where to find them. Ooh, sexy. So what's sexy about it? Looking for the beast or the beast? Maybe it's just the word fantastic. Oh. It's an exciting word. Yeah, I guess so. It could really apply to so many things. Mm -hmm. Um, What would make it cringy? What's the cringiest title you've heard? Hmm. Is there one you've heard? I don't know. I, nothing comes to mind for me. Yeah, there's me. nothing that like specifically um, stands out. Um. No, I mean, the only one I can think of, well, no, that's not even, basically, I was just thinking of, like, maybe a poorly translated translated one. Oh, yeah, yeah. But even then, it's just, like, that's just stupid. Yeah. I, there's nothing, there's no good. That's America's fault. Right. Is it America's? Uh, for now. Okay. Till, <laughs> till next time. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So what's your cringy title? Did you say one? Well, uh, I already forgot it because I, I was thinking about it all day. And I'm like, I'm going to mess it up. It was. Uh, you came up with one. And I can't remember it now. That's because all the, the Nazi trilogy. It was uh, Uncle Something Sock Puppet Party. Oh, yeah, yeah. Basically, I think it was. Uncle, you already said it. Yeah, I Uncle forgot. Tony, I think. Yeah, Uncle I, Tony Sock Puppet Party. <laughs> that is a terrible title. It's pretty awkward. Like, what could the movie It's really be awkward. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to know. I don't either. This that's is, the thing. I'm not interested in watching But it's rated movie. G, so that's good. Or is it? Dude, one time, okay, when I was working in a store that sold DVDs, mm -hmm. I'm looking through the shelf one day, and Blu-rays. It wasn't strictly DVDs. Jeez, wow. guys. I'm looking through one day, and I find this movie, and it's called, like, it's one of those, like, old school, like, C-grade horror movies. Okay. If a C, mm -hmm. like... Uh, it was called like The Devil's Brides or something. Or, like, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was... All, I'm looking at it and I'm like, what the heck is this? I flip it over and it's all about like the descriptions all about like blood rituals and like it's one of those old school like gory like whatever. Yeah, just, just like over the top. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? 
Uh, and I looked down at the bottom. It was rated PG. I was For like, what? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, even the cover. I'm like, if I showed this to my son, he would have a heart attack. <laughs> He's like, like, what am I looking at? Just looking at the cover. That must have been way early on. Because I know when they initially did the rating system, mm-hmm. uh, PG-13 didn't exist. And R was only for like way out there. Yeah, yeah. So at the time, it was G, PG, and then R. This seemed pretty out there. Yeah. Do you think R out there? I mean, at least. Because I've most certainly heard of some PG movies. Because PG just stood for like... <laughs> It's up to the parents to decide. Parental right? guidance. Yeah, time. exactly. Stand for parental guidance. So, but that meant from anywhere ranging from Teletubbies to friggin' Chucky. I 7. swear, if Teletubbies comes up again, I'm gonna walk out. You're not gonna like my TV section today, then. Great. I have a stupid question for okay. you. Okay, I like it. Um, based off of our current attire, Superman versus Captain America. Here's the question: mm-hmm. Is it even a good fight? No. Really? Unfortunately not. No, yeah. I think I think Superman is notoriously overpowered. He is. Um and even though Captain America is like strong, mm-hmm. it's just like science that made him strong, not like natural yeah. alienism. You know? Right, natural alienism. <laughs> <laughs> is that um, like, is alienism like I just made it a word if it isn't one, so I feel like that's it's like racism, but Against aliens? Yeah. Well, racism could apply to aliens. They're a race. Right. The so race alienism is just being an alien and having alienistic attributes. Yes. <laughs> 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 is that you revealing you're an alien? It's hard for me. Oh, eh, it's oh. hard for me to think that ah, 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 ah. <laughs> to think that um, Cap would just get destroyed. I just can't picture it. I know it's a sad thing to think of, but I just think they're on way different spectrums. But he's a super soldier. Super short or Shiram. Um, I think. Well, I mean, when he fought, like he couldn't even beat Iron Man. I mean, they didn't necessarily beat mm, each other, but yeah. but he had a hard a hard enough time fighting Iron Man. If Superman uses his friggin' laser beams, he could be cheap like an injustice and just use him over and over again. And Superman would murder Iron Man. Yeah, that's oh, not even a fight. I know that's the sad thing with Iron Man. All he needs is like his suit to stop working. It's unfortunate. But like do. Batman has fought Superman. Yeah, Batman's a genius though. Stark's got he's, a lot of attitude. <laughs> <laughs> he's a dude with some two. He's brilliant. He is brilliant, but I don't think he's crafty like Batman. What about that time he blew up all his suits? So that's pretty crafty. Yeah, that was so crafty. For that. <laughs> I don't think Batman would ever blow up his suit. So Cap, it's not even a fight. But um, no, I don't think so. That's a bummer, man. Do you think Superman could break his shield? Yeah. Really? Probably. I don't think so. Why? I don't know. If he can't break his shield, then they got it. There's got to be a little bit of a fight. Yeah, but I mean, the other thing with Superman is it's always hard to tell if he can get hurt or not. Like if Cap throws the shield and hits right. Superman with it. Oh, what if the shield's made out of kryptonite? Yeah, see, I feel like Cap would find some upper hand. Yeah, I mean, I think there are possibilities. But if we were to just do base Captain America versus base Superman. Yeah. That's what would happen. It is kind of hard because they'll show Superman... Like getting shot and there's not a problem. Like he doesn't even budge. Right. But then someone punches him and he reacts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when uh, in Batman versus Superman, they fist fight. Although he does have like super kryptonite suit. He does. Um, but in in so many different iterations, sometimes bullets hurt, sometimes they don't. So it's hard to figure out. Like, like bullets notoriously have zero effect on Superman whatsoever. Yeah, there's never like, been. Like they don't even puncture him. Yeah. They just bounce off mm-hmm. him. But if someone punches him. It hurts him. Like, shouldn't their fists like not even? Shouldn't there be no reaction? Yeah, it should be way less than that because I mean, bullets are obviously they have more power. They they are meant to kill and hurt. Your fists, you're just meat puppets. <laughs> freaking Uncle Tony. Yeah, freaking Uncle Tony. All right, that's sad. I think you're probably know, right though. It's unfortunate, but I think if Captain America got a kryptonite shield or some form of kryptonite, yeah. I think he would be a formidable foe. Got to weaken him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you might be right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shield slash. Shield. <laughs> uh, charging s- stripes. Sh- char- <laughs> stars and stars and superstars and Starbucks. Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> I um, we're done in reflections. Yeah. Stupid questions. Yeah. Uh, was it television? Television. Television. 
All right, here we are on television. TV. Um, I got some recap type things to talk about. Recaps, okay. Because we already mentioned it, and I don't want to forget about it, because mm-hmm. that's what we do. <laughs> 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 Let's talk about Iron Fist for a minute. Okay. Um, so I'm six episodes in. I am nine. Here's the thing what was the question about you had for uh, me? where you put it in the lineup. Oh, yes, of course. Now, again, granted, you're not done. Yes, I'm not done yet. Um, granted. 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 Grant. Who's Grant? Me. I have a friend named Grant. I love him very much. I don't know you, so I can't send the love. Just send the love, you jerk. Have I told you my theory on love? <sighs> I don't know. Does it have to do with chicken nuggets? <laughs> uh, we had that conversation. No. What's your theory on love? I don't. I think love is overused. The word? The word. 100%. It's very strange you bring that up. There's a podcast I listen to that brings this up pretty regularly. Go ahead. Uh, because I'm on that podcast. Oh, that's you? Yeah. I thought you sounded familiar. Yeah. I mean, it is called Tim's Love Triangle. Right, I just where it's me and two women talking about how much they love me. Right, and then I cry because it's actually just me in a room by myself. Yeah, I just hadn't put the pieces together. Yeah, I actually now that you say it, it's like oh, of course. Yeah, it makes sense. Puppets. Um, so yeah, I feel like the word is used too much. It is, uh, and I feel like it loses value because people use it too much. Oh, you know, if it's friends and they're like, oh, I love you, it doesn't mean as much as if you actually genuinely like love them, not romantically, but just just any kind. Yeah. Well, even romantically, right? Do you think people are quick to say it? Uh, in t- at least today's generation, yeah, I think it's just something people throw out. Just like a lot of the time, it should mean like the next de- step in the relationship. But, right, 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 right. But a lot of times, people just kind of throw it out there. It's like, oh, I love my bae and stupid stuff. Right. Like that. Interesting. So, so my theory with it is, I'll only say it, at least try to. There's some people I'm unfortunately stuck in that loop where I have to say it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> Where, where I've already said it once, and I'm like, well, I can't stop saying it. But at that yeah. point, I genuinely feel it. But, you make um, yourself. Yeah, I'm like, I have to. I must but I'll you. either say it, like, once, <laughs> like, the time when it's right, that, that important sure, sure, time, sure, yeah. or on my deathbed. So That's it's like, it, huh? The whole life, I don't say it to you at all, and then on, my, on my deathbed, because it'll mean so much right there. It'll be, like, the most... <sighs> be the best worst moment of your life so you are going out with a bang i am i will i will send some people off with a final goodbye and I'm okay like, here's the question though <laughs> we're gonna have a room full of every person you've ever not said it to yes yeah, so i'll be like all right before i die what do you everyone- picture your death being like you're gonna have a megaphone or like no the idea is i'm gonna be in a mansion you're gonna live stream it yeah <laughs> 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 I just have the cameras pointed. I'm just reading this paper like, oh, Oh. yeah. (laughs) Just read a name. This person, I love you. (laughs) Jame, I love you. Jenny, I love you. I can only think of J names. Justin, I love you. That's fine. Go through the list. It's alphabetical. (laughs) Uh, I'll have I'll have someone edit it after and have certain marks where I start letters like A. If you're in this category, two minutes in. Oh, I said Jim really weird a minute ago. I said like jam. I thought you said like Jane. <laughs> yeah, I don't even J- know. What came Jam. Out. I don't know. So wait, would you say you're gonna be in a mansion? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you in a mansion? <laughs> That's how I just assume I'll go. In I want to be. Re- I want to be really old in a big comfy bed, and I'll be like, my eyes are closed, mm. my my hands on my red velvet blanket, right, and I'm just laying there in this big bed, mm. but surrounded by everyone. Everyone. And I had a legacy, right? But I was very cruel because I didn't say I love you to a lot of people, right? But then I'll say it but at the then, end. But then, yeah, yeah, it's like a Scrooge moment. Yeah, it is. Except Scrooge didn't die. I mean, he must have eventually. Soon after, I'm sure that dude was old. He was real old. But he, I mean, he became spry though. That might have given him a few more years. That's true. Yeah, spryness is known to give you a couple years. Yeah, I I think if you're young at heart, you yeah. can stay young forever. Plus, didn't he buy that kid a turkey? He did. So I mean, that's good, Wait, right? Does that give him like bonus time? I assume it's like death just sitting there like that was nice here's a yeah. few extra minutes right yeah uh-huh. death was ready to take him and then he saw the whole turkey thing go down he's like oh jeez <laughs> you know what let's let him stay for a little bit yeah just a little bit maybe we'll yeah. buy more turkeys sweet turkey purchase could you live forever in that case would you start a band with me called sweet turkey purchase <laughs> 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 only if we sing indie folk music absolutely it, but we can only play instruments that are turkeys sweet turkey purchase <laughs> You got the turkey drums. I'm to say it like that. Yeah. <laughs> With the drumsticks? Yeah. And, you'll <laughs> and I will play the turkey neck. Yeah. That's so oh, gross. That's weird. What are we talking Wait, about? Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Something about like how love is overused. Yes. And we're in TV. 
Um, but you were saying how you're going to die in a mansion. Yes. That we got to turkey. Scrooge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you asked if you could live forever. Right. Yeah, if you just keep buying people turkeys. But I guess you have to know. You got to know that. That's the thing nobody knows. Right. Yeah. But we just said it. It's I had r- turkey earlier today. Right. Eating it doesn't help you. Oh. Yeah. Probably actually makes it worse. Yeah. Okay, so the order of <laughs> Netflix TV Wait. shows. Bring it around. Uh, just bringing it right back. Um, Top Daredevil Season 1. Yeah. Daredevil Season 2. Yeah. Jessica Jones. Yeah. Iron Fist. Yeah. Luke Cage. Really? I was not the biggest fan of Luke Cage. I know. You keep saying it, and I'm waiting for you to just adjust. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, how long have I been saying Thor? You didn't even... Fi- All right. Stop Dark right there. Terrible. I'm not getting into this with you. It's not It's, not, it's okay. It's, a, it's, it's a, a, Okay. A, okay. Okay. Um, You didn't even finish Iron Fist yet. I know. You still put it above Luke Cage? Yeah. Well, initially, I had that as my number two. It surpassed Jessica Jones. After, uh, I think it was episode four, I was talking about (laughs) where it kind of lost me. But those first three episodes, I was hooked. I was like, this is going to be sweet. I love the kung fu aspect. Yeah. I love all the things going on. But There are lots of things. Yes. All right. So there's something about Iron Fist where um, I am super excited to watch it Mm -hmm. like every night. It's Mm -hmm. now it's nightly routine until we're done. Rachel and I are both pretty stoked on it. Neither of us can really figure out why. I think the characters are more intriguing than I thought at first. Um, yeah. Meaning, like, I really, really like Ward. I um, do, too. I was really... Which, this throws me back to Grant Ward. I think anybody with the name Ward... I kind of <laughs> want to, like... I don't know if I want to have another son and name him Ward or, like... But something needs to happen but with the yeah, name I Ward. yeah, I really like his character yeah, for some reason. Yeah, I do, too. I'm, like, super... It's very, very layered. And yeah. we're, um, for anyone who hasn't watched like no spoilers here or anything yeah. um because i'm not done and tim's not done either mm-hmm. um i'm on episode nine you're on episode six six um tom delfrey is mm-hmm. the actor's name oh, i'm sorry pelfrey um how do I, you mix p and d i because my brain is <laughs> i'm not sure i've never seen him in anything else but i really really like him yep. like the second or third episode i was just like i i out loud said i really like that guy yeah um He's just really, really great, and the character is very, very layered. Mm-hmm. Where um, super complex, like just the yeah. things he has to deal with and that get piled on as you continue yeah. the series. And again, this is this is not a spoiler because yep. it's first episode. He's kind of set as like, oh, this guy's going to be kind of an antagonist, and and he wasn't. He kind like he remains in that position to a degree. Yes, but there are things about his experience that are like. Oh, that's going to suck for him. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's funny because it's like you realistically feel for him. Like if you were in that position, you'd you'd be like, I think this is how I would react. Right. And at first he seems like an awful character, like someone you wouldn't like. And I'm like, I'm glad this guy is such a jerk because I didn't want to like him anyway. Yeah. Um, But like episode two, three and continuing on, I'm like, man, this guy is awesome. I know. I'm really, really. He's a big part of what I'm intrigued about in the show where they're going to go with his character. Yeah, exactly. Um, And you're on episode six. Okay. So. Yeah. I won't say anything else. Yeah. I mean, things are starting to get kind of crazy with him. Yeah. Um, I won't say what with, but there are just some things progressing. They're like, oh, this is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you, uh, where I am now, you don't see like use of the Iron Fist very often, no. which is fine. Yeah. I, I understand reserving it for special moments. The first time you see it is great. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I didn't have, I was kind of watching for, you had said that, uh, some of the fight scenes started losing you mm-hmm. and I didn't I was fine with them there were a couple spots because I was looking for it that I was like all right I could yeah, see that yeah I think if you're on the, under the impression you'll I don't know they just caught me like it's the angles like there are very obvious angles for like stunt okay, doubles and stuff yeah, well even just like oh they they shot from this angle so he could do this like crazy kick and not actually kick this guy in the face right. you know what i mean like yeah. there are a couple things like that but nothing really threw me off i didn't really have it much as much of a um like a reaction to those scenes i actually i think the fight scenes are progressively getting better and more in depth i really like the fight choreography i'll say that oh wow yeah i, I really do I, I was um like i really i do like the kung fu aspect and it looks cool um but it's still even nine episodes in there's still a few fights that i'm kind of like yeah Man, but there are there is one whole episode that's amazing because it's like <clears throat> a series of fights that goes on, mm-hmm. and it's uh they they're cool fights, um and they're done well. I just watched one that was 
kind of like that. Trials? Uh, maybe it wasn't that one. Wait, it's two, one, one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That I thought that episode was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, what do you think of Danny just as a character in general? So I'm a little confused about him. Mm-hmm. Um, he has this childish, childishness about him that I don't understand. Yeah. I thought he was very, very naive. And I don't, I, I, I guess it could be because of his backstory. Um, uh, I don't want to say anything. I, I really don't want to like say anything at all, but because of his, you know, what we find out about him, where he's been, um, maybe it's because he's been outside of modern day civilization, mm-hmm. but the childishness is what I don't fully get. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if that's part of his character. Cause it doesn't come across as like a, uh, I don't know, like a, like, um, like a Hawkeye character who's just like sarcastic or like or or goofy mm-hmm. or carefree. Yeah, he seriously seems like a little kid. Yeah, and I don't, I can't figure that out. Mm-hmm. I don't, I still feel like I don't really get. I feel like he's starting to unravel a little bit more as a character. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, I see it, but he doesn't come across as this like fully matured warrior to me. Mm-hmm. But he also doesn't come across as like a total outsider who doesn't understand anything. Yeah. Like he seems to have a grasp of what modern day is like. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Like just with a child's point of view, like there's a lot of things that he just doesn't think about. Like he just does a lot of things. And yeah. He doesn't think about it. And maybe that's because this is his origin in a yeah. sense. So it's like him learning how, that's what I can't how to figure be out. the Iron Fist. It doesn't seem... It doesn't seem like, um, I don't know what the word is, like in your face enough what his situation is. Because there are some things, let's say, for example, that he will say to someone. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, "Um, where'd you come from? And he'll tell his story, which is a little bit fantastical. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, why would he not know that when he says this, it's going to sound crazy to that person? Yeah, like with the doctor. Yes. Yes. That was super frustrating because it's like he knows at this point that sounds insane. So why why, why? would he do that? Because he had the opportunity. Like, that okay. Has, so yeah, that's the childish ishness or his, him being so naive because he's like, right. oh man, this guy believes me. Let me tell him the full story. And I don't get why that is. There are actually three things mm-hmm. that I am having a hard time with. That I'm like, I don't understand. They just seem like poor decisions. Yeah. And that's one of them. He that, keeps telling this fantastical story of his to people that respond like, okay, you know that this sounds crazy. And he's like, why won't you believe me? I'm telling you the truth. And mm-hmm. it's like, why aren't you smart enough to know? Right. Just tell this him. This sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Just tell him you got picked up by monks. And even the guy would go, the, the doctor. I'm he was about. with him for part of the way. Yeah. He could be like, okay, monks, that makes sense. Right. Where? He could have just said anywhere in China. And right. That would have been the end of it. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know. I and I think that's just I like I said I think it's just to show that he's naive and that he like is so trusting of people and he has to learn the hard way that he mm-hmm. can't just spurt the truth all the time. I, that's the only thing I can yeah. think of, but it's stupid. It, I, don't I really thought it was get stupid. That. Yeah. So, okay, so let me tell you the other two things. Yep. I think I can do this without spoiling anything. Mm-hmm. So that's the one is his his naivety or naivete. I don't know how I to know, say that. I think naivete is how you say it. I, I was feel thinking silly like saying it. No, I, I don't even know what word. Uh, nivi- I can't even say it. Nativity? Uh, that's what Nativity? I, even, I don't know what A that nativity is. nativity scene? <laughs> like from Christmas? <laughs> See, I knew it was something. Um, <laughs> his, uh, his just, I guess, childishness, like, mm-hmm. and not childlikeness, but yes. just because there is like a carefree attitude about him, but mm-hmm. it's not just that. He seems like... He can get very serious at times. Yeah. Very, very adult. Like he, he like ruffles through a bunch of papers and he like knows how to adult basically. Okay. So that's okay. So that brings me to the second thing, right? Um, see, maybe this is a little bit spoilery though. Uh, okay. Well, let me, let me tell you this one. Yep. There is a 
No, I can do that one without spoiling. So there's the first one, which is him being like overly naive yep. to the point where he does some things that I just think are stupid. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I can't figure out why he would do that. Um, you know, we could probably spoil it. It's been out for a while. That's true. But I haven't even finished it. So I was thinking okay. if we talk about it again when we're finished, yeah, we could do like okay, more full. of a spoiler one. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so the second thing is there is a scene where he's in a truck. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's being followed by a friend in a car. Yes. He's inside of a truck. Yeah. It's like an like an 18 wheeler. Yep. The doors are closed. Mm-hmm. When he goes into the truck, he walks behind boxes into a room. Yeah. At one point in that room, a gun shoots and they the camera cuts from inside the truck outside to his friend's car yep. and show his friend's windshield being shot by a bullet. Yes. What? What? <laughs> there is no possible way. Why? Dude, I will have to show you this scene again. Mm-hmm. It's just, there's no way that the, the Where, way. That, where's the gun aiming? Is that it? Is that what throws you off? Is that the no, gun? No, it's, it's that it's like layers beyond layers deep in this truck. Yeah, but it totally could penetrate everything. No way. No way. For dude. sure. No way. Even if it avoided. No, I mean, even if it hit the, the box. Dude, the doors. Yeah, it wouldn't fly through those. And then. Through uh, the doors of a Mack truck, you know, the ones that like buckle shut. Yeah. And then with enough force to hit a moving car's windshield. No way. I believe There's no (laughs) way. There's no way. And for them to have put that much effort to show it was just ridiculous. I'm with you where it was unnecessary. Like we didn't need that scene. Dude, it wouldn't have happened. I will show you the scene after we're done. Oh, I remember. I just saw it the other day. I totally know exactly what you're talking about. It doesn't make any sense. It's. I think it's possible. Doesn't I, make any sense. Well, it depends how high the caliber of the gun is. It's a freaking handgun. It could be a magnum. It's not. It's not, but regardless, <laughs> it could have <laughs> it could have the power of a magnum behind it. I don't think I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. I like to believe. All right. But I, I get you. It's something that is a little stupid. A little that far-fetched. seems garbage. Yeah. I don't understand it. <laughs> Problem number three. Yes. He you find this out in the first episode. Mm-hmm. Danny Pregnant. owns <laughs> Oh. He owns Rand. Yes. Okay. It's his company. Yeah. Well, he has like he has a fifty-one percent right majority share in yep. Rand, and he knows this. Mm-hmm. Okay. So why in the first episode does he ask for a job with? Um. Oh shoot. What's her name? I forget the character's name. Joy. Nope. Uh. The Colleen. Sec- Colleen uh, Wing. Secretary. Nope. Colleen Wing. She's the one. Who the martial artist who owns the dojo? Oh yes. Yeah. So why did he ask for a job? First episode, he runs into her in a park, and right? She, and she's posting up flyers, and he's like, "Hey, maybe I can get a job with you." Well, after that, he knew he wasn't allowed in Rand, and I don't think he knew he had fifty-one percent at the time. I don't know when he finds it out. I think he finds it out later. He finds it out when he talks to the lawyer. Oh, okay. You might be right. I think he knows he has a stake in the company, but I don't think he knows he has as much as when it's revealed. Okay. So I think at that time he was like, well, I can't go into Rand. I need a job because he figured out New York. Did he know at that point? I don't think so. That's the first episode. We don't see the lawyer till the second or third. But did he know at that point that he couldn't go into Rand? Yeah. Cause that was after he got kicked he out. He got kicked out. Yeah. Okay. That brings me to a qualm though. The homeless guy. Yeah. With the cell phone. Yeah. How stupid was that scene? That actually, I don't think it's that stupid. <laughs> um, Cause he said, I can look up whatever I want on this phone until whoever's phone it is cancels the plan. Yeah. That's so it's a fine. stolen phone. But who walks up to someone and is like, Hey, I have this thing called a iPhone and it could search up anybody. How does he know that guy doesn't know anything? I feel like it's unanimous that everyone knows what an iPhone is or a smartphone even. He just walks up to him expecting him not to know what a smartphone is. <laughs> I don't really think about that. Um, <laughs> I don't know, because he thinks he's just another homeless guy. So maybe but homeless, homeless guys, people know stuff. Yeah, though. they know more than most people, I assume. I don't know. That's just a nitpick. Oh, I missed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's just, I guess that's it has. It just has weird choices, mm-hmm. but uh, it's still good. Like... I'm with you. I'm excited to see the next episode regardless. Um, yeah. And it's cool that they're adding elements from all the other Netflix shows. You yeah. know, the, um, what's her face? I forgot her name, but you know who I'm talking about. Old Lady McGee. 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, her. <laughs> um, I just like that she has been jumping Old around. Lady McGee. And uh, the nurse. I don't know anybody's name. Um, so that's Madame Gao that Ma- you're talking yes. about. And um, and then Claire Temple shows up again, who yeah. is Rosario she Dawson. Is, <laughs> she's the Nick Fury. She of is the, the Nick Fury <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, which Defenders is August 18th, not the 8th. The 18th. Okay, so that is next Friday. Nice. Mm-hmm. It'll be a week from the day that this podcast is out. Beautiful. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty exciting. So yeah. I'll definitely be done with it by then. Yeah, I I'm either gonna finish it. Eh, I'll probably finish it this week. At some yeah. Point. Um. Yeah, man. It's it's uh it's. Uh, I don't know. There's where some, would you place it if you had to order it. them? Uh, oof, I'm ill prepared. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard not to put Daredevil at the top. Yeah, first it, season, second season. Dude, freaking Punisher's so good. That's such a good season. But I think the first season, just like uh, Iron Man, like... I know. That's what I'm saying. It's got the Iron Man effect. It's the first one. I feel like I got to (sighs) go... Oof. Um, Shoot, this is hard, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Because there's so many things. Freaking Kilgrave, dude. Kilgrave was real neat. I'm saying. For number one, though? Jessica Jones? No, I'm just I like just the order. I know Iron Fist throws a wrench into things. No, nah, I think Iron Fist is at the bottom for me. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So all the other ones are so good. I don't know. Are. Uh uh See okay, here's the way my brain works. <laughs> Daredevil two ends up at like spot four, but just because I don't want to put two of the same one right, right. next to each other. <laughs> So, so it would be Daredevil 1, Daredevil 2. I don't know. Luke Cage or Jessica? I don't know. I'm torn, man. I loved Jessica Jones. They're both so different, mm-hmm. but I loved Luke Cage. I can't rank them. I can't wow. do it yet. Uh, let me finish Iron Fist. And then you'll... And then watch everything again. Oh, okay. I still have to finish my uh, my MCU list. What, I, s- wh- I stopped at... Uh, I finished Iron Man three and then started watching Thor two and then and you fell asleep because it was so boring. I no, I fell asleep because I started it late. Yeah, Shut sure. up. The dark elves <laughs> are cool. What if this was a podcast strictly about My Little Pony? We'd probably have more listeners. That's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the change. All right, um, uh, so I'm gonna stay in recap mode real quick, just because um, I have now watched Castlevania. Oh. Baby. We won't stay here long because we already discussed a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, really good. The yes. animation is so clean. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, it is insanely brutal. Yeah, they do not hold back on the violence. Not whatsoever. at all. Um, it's crazy brutal. Um, a couple things I'll bring up. I really love the character of Trevor Belmont. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the... Uh, it definitely let me hit this real quick it definitely feels like a teaser when it's over it's like oh snap like this is (laughs) just getting started yeah um and it's cool to see what they did with four episodes to set everything up Mm -hmm. um but i'm definitely like amped on them putting out more because yeah it's just really great And, and i have to agree with what you said before I think maybe this should be how we get our video game adaptations from now on because this yeah. is great. It, it seriously, <laughs> like, it felt it. It was so great. I don't know if it necessarily felt like Castlevania, like it did, mm-hmm. but uh, it totally feels like just its own entity. Like it yeah. doesn't. If it was named anything else, I'd be like, "This is still awesome." I feel like that's kind of what you want, though. Like you want it to be the same setting and everything, but a new experience. Yes, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I would want. You want nods to the things that you know. You want the weapons. You want the whip. Yep. Um, I I loved that. I mean, the way that they showed the consecrated whip and how it interacts with the demons. God, and it's so brutal. It's so crazy. The first cool, guy man. he whips, um, the guy he gets in the eye. Yes. That was so... Dude. It was just like, woo! It's, it's so great. Not holding back. And there's a lot of interesting... Um, I, I like a lot of the themes in it. Um mm-hmm the the church being corrupt and the i mean not that i like the you theme of the church being corrupt, being corrupt but the way that um, they tell that story there's actually a really interesting so okay first episode this is kind of a spoiler but it's the setup for the whole story Which um i think i said you had mentioned yeah, yeah so uh okay. a woman is burned at the stake mm-hmm. and there's this really awesome moment i thought was really awesome where 
she has a Christ-like moment while she's being burned at the stake for mm-hmm. being presumed a witch by the church, who yep. is like totally corrupt. Um, what I what I meant was I like the ideas that are explored here with the church as the villain. Mm-hmm. Um, is they so she's being burned at the stake and she cries out like they don't know what they're doing Mm -hmm. don't hurt them yep which is you know that's a parallel to christ on the cross like forgive them for they know not what they do Mm -hmm. her crying out for the church i was like oh man that's deep like that is so deep what's going on right Mm -hmm. here and so that was a crazy moment and then i really um really interesting uh beauty and the beast type uh, depiction of Dracula. Oh yeah, and her at the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Did you pick that up? Yeah, yeah. Dude, when she was walking in, I was like, just waiting for Lumiere to walk out because yeah. like, I was like, this is very and like. It, it was such a great dynamic between the two, though, because you know anybody who sees Dracula freaks out and they're afraid. Yeah. She was totally brave, and she right. She was ten times more focused on her like pursuits, her yeah. career and stuff, uh, which is a lot like Belle because she like. She's not necessarily afraid of the beast. She like she reads the that's what it was and stuff. So uh, I think it was just it was cool, and I really hopefully they'll kind of explore their relationship more because yeah. I thought that was really neat where he's like this dark demon and she's like the mm-hmm. sunshine of his life basically. Um, yeah, and, and, it, and it really was. You're right. It was um, it was her attitude to be like, I'm not I'm not afraid of you. Mm-hmm. I'm here for what I'm here for. Are you gonna help me or not? Right. And he like let his guard down mm-hmm. because he's like, you're not afraid of me. Right. Plus you've been here for two minutes and you're like suggesting that I go explore the world. And mm-hmm. like it was those attitudes. I was like, this is Beauty and the Beast yeah, right now. It is. <laughs> um, and it takes a much darker turn than Beauty and the Beast. Fortunately, but, but. Um, it's great. It's mm-hmm. four episodes about, I want to say they're like 22 minutes because the yep. credits start at about a minute and a half before they're over. Yep. Um, so it's a very quick watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, really awesome uh, fight scenes. Probably the best ones I think are in episodes two and four. Four definitely has the four is so great. That that's I think really where the animation shines mm-hmm. is like because it's very fluid, it's so super fluid, fast like, paced. It's oh, uh, it's beautiful. The colors, it's mm-hmm. just a really good fight. I really like I really really like the way that um, anime that animation style has evolved. Mm-hmm. Where now it still has like the, they'll do the still spanning shots where there's no motion, it's just sound, and yep. they kind of create that feeling mm-hmm. um, as if it's moving, but it's just a picture of a crowd with yep. a bunch of like people yelling or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the action scenes and stuff, I was thinking about this the other day because I was watching, um, I was catching up on Ninja Turtles, the animated series, mm-hmm. and they use so many things that are derivative of like Eastern animation mm-hmm. where the the way that they show emotion or the way that they all will jump up at one point at one moment and say different things all at the same time. Mm-hmm. There's one moment where like something is revealed in the show and Raph is like, what? And then Donnie's like, no way. And then Mikey's like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and they all do it like one after another. And I'm like, that's so derivative <laughs> of is. anime. Yeah, it's yeah. really funny. So, but those, those things and the way that they've evolved are really interesting to see in this show, which is you'd say it's anime style, like yeah, the whole totally. thing. And, but it's so fluent and it's like, it's so pretty. I mean, it's devastatingly brutal, yeah. but um, it was really great. So mm-hmm. I'd suggest Castlevania to anyone. Also written by Warren Ellis, who... Are you familiar with Warren Ellis? Nope. Let me see if I can look up a list of his work. Uh, do you have anything else that you wanted to discuss in TV? In TV? Let me check my notes. But uh, I don't think so. The only... Uh, I've really only been watching Iron Fist. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh Iron Fist is still great. I'm very interested in starting a new anime, though. I need to find something to watch. I have a list. Uh, actually, I finished Castlevania and almost mm-hmm. started another one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I played an episode of Legends instead. Oh, that was, I, was, oh. <laughs> I hadn't started a new one. But yeah. I'm on the same, I think, because I watched that one. Yeah. Are any of the Berserk things on... The Berserk, the new Berserk movies... Oh, that was months ago when I watched them, though. Were they on Netflix, They though? were, yeah. Okay. Um... If not, I'm trying to think where else they would be. Hulu has a pretty good array of anime. Mm. They have a very good catalog of it. Um, and then, of course, there's Crunchyroll, which is like that's the premium HD anime service. Oh, um, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's, um, right. that's a good one. But, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure what I want to start yet. Uh, uh, next, I, I made in the mood for, I think, like an emotional trip. An emotional trip, eh? Yes. Have you ever watched Armitage? No, definitely heard of it, but I haven't seen it. I guess it's not super emotional, but... Violent? 
Um, no, not really. It's more of a sci-fi, like futuristic android story. I like that too. Yeah. Uh, so Warren Ellis, wrote, he's he's written a ton of comic books. Oh, um, he's a comic book dude. Okay. Also wrote Iron Man three, Red, mm. Red two, Dead Space, the animated movie that came mm. out in two thousand eight. Um, so he wrote Castlevania. Oh, okay. Um, but if it's the same Warren Ellis, which I believe it is, he's also written for like uh, Excalibur, um, Thor. He did a Wolverine arc. Oh, nice. Um, oh yeah, he uh. He worked for Image for a little while, um, the Wildstorm Studio, mm -hmm. doing Gen 13. Oh, mm -hmm. it was a spinoff called DV8, uh, and then took over Stormwatch. So he's done a bunch of stuff in comics. And That's awesome. When I saw his name on Castlevania, I was like, yep, that makes sense. Yep. So, um, yeah, That's man. That's cool that he's bringing it to the animated realm, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess that's all I've got in TV. Me too. All right, so... Um, I got video games. Same. All right, video games it is. Let's do it, all right? All right. Video games. Oh, we're in video games. You know what they just showed off the other day? What? The special stages for Sonic Mania. Really? The Sonic music's awesome. Not even gonna take time to do that. <laughs> Whoa, <but laughs> must be that good. Well, yeah, it, they look so cool. How cool do they? So look? they have, uh, I believe, it said there was three, but I only saw two. I don't know what the third one was. Anyways, um, so one is. Uh, you're getting a little close. Um, you know how when you beat a level in earlier Sonic games, you have to jump in a big ring? At least not Marvel Zone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> great. Now Marvel Zone stuck in my head. Um, so, yeah, it's you You remember the um, 3D ball puzzle ones where you had to, like, uh, collect all the blue balls and then yes. they'll become red balls and stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like that, except it's in a 3D realm. Um, okay. which I guess it was originally, but it's a bonus thing. Or? Yeah, it's a bonus stage. Um, and you still collect those 3d balls, but instead of it being, uh, like you collect all four and then get like a, or not all four, but collect them all in a square. Yeah. You, <laughs> I just, I'm so upset. I just, that can't be the Sonic use like every week. What else happens Tim? <laughs> You collect the balls and you start filling up this bar and you're chasing, I think you're just chasing Eggman or a robot or something. Oh, cool. The more balls you collect, the faster you go. And yeah. then eventually you either catch them or you don't. Nice. Um, and then they do have the ball stage, the classic one. That one is just when you get a checkpoint and jump through the uh, star circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They probably can't even hear me. You should freestyle to this. Sonic runs fast and he likes grilled hey, cheese. Hey. Chili dogs taste like yum, 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 yum. <laughs> I hate this. Are we even in video games or are we at Satan's house? Right, so that sounds awesome. Yeah, I bet it does. Sonic, uh, start from the beginning. Sonic Mania. <laughs> Room. Um, here's the thing about Sonic Mania. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. It was exciting. August 15th it comes out. Yo, that's in like an hour. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I got choked up there. Yeah. Um. So you want to go first in video games? I mean, you feel like you kind of just did. Yeah, I did. I was very excited. Did you finish what you were wanting to say? At this point, it doesn't even matter. Special stages. It looks cool. It looks like they're doing a lot so of So they're bonuses? Well, yeah, there's two, you know, Sonic games traditionally have bonus stages. So Is that what they are? Well, one's like to get the Chaos Emeralds and the other one's to get extra lives and stuff. The extra lives is the classic orb collecting one. And the new one's the one where you chase a robot and collect more orbs and rings. All right, so I played a demo. <gasps> uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Infinite! Is that what it's called? Yeah! I'm not sure. Should I look it up? Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. You sure? No. How come everything's infinite? Infinite. Bioshock infinite. Call of Duty infinite warfare. See? How come everything's infinite? Infinity Blade. It's like they're never going to make another one. Because it's supposed to be like... <laughs> <laughs> Sonic infinite. So oh. Because it's supposed to be like what? Uh, Like the... Uh, 
<laughs> the epitome of the epitome. Game. The epitome. The epitome. Um, so yes, this is the this one's coming out pretty soon, actually. Uh yeah. Marvel Scrapcom. That's messed up, dude. Oh uh, well, you know. When you can't have X Men, what's the point? Um what? You can't have X Men. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see. I don't have the exact date on here. I believe it's uh <sighs> October. Everything's coming out in October. Well, you know why. Why? I don't know. Oh, okay. Um yeah, so uh, the demo came out. Yes. I played the demo. Mm-hmm. Uh, very briefly, my friend was playing it, and he was like, dude, you got to check this out. Dude. So I watched him play a little bit. Mm-hmm. And the demo is uh, strictly story mode. Mm-hmm. And so you transition through different characters and stuff. I played as Thor and Sir Arthur. That's a great combo. Yep, yep. It was pretty great. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's cool. The story mode reminded me of... Um, I guess like uh, like Mortal Kombat, the story progresses, characters meet, and talk. And you jump to different characters yeah. and stuff. I, I, I like that format, mm-hmm. you know, because it gives you a chance to test out these characters. Yeah. And it gives you combinations you wouldn't necessarily think of. It's yeah. like, oh, I got to learn Thor and Sir Arthur mm-hmm. um, and figure out their combos, like see right. how they work together. So that's really cool. I like that a lot, too, because it combines like what I o- I'm sure a lot of people do. But I've always done this with fighting games is I would just go through each character and play through arcade mode. Yeah. And find out who I like the best, but also know a little bit about each character. Character, yeah, you know? I don't think everybody played as every character in arcade mode. Though. I rarely ever made it through. Yeah. But I always started like with Street Fighter. When Street Fighter 4 came out, mm-hmm. I started top left and just went through the whole thing and played each arcade you don't mode. You start at first with your like favorite character or no. whatever? No. no. That's what I do. Favorite Especially because each one has like um, new characters. So I'm like, my favorite might be new. Right. Oh, that's true. Be one of the new characters. Ibuki. Like Ibuki. And now, yeah, Ibuki was my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <in that one. laughs> um, so, um, two things that I noticed about this game. One, again, I only played as the two characters. No, um, uh, what was it called? No, like, launch move. You know how in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, you'd hit A, launch them up in the air, yeah. you could do this, the air combos? Yeah. None of that. Really? Well, at least it wasn't like A, I couldn't figure out a way to launch them yeah. up. Yeah. Okay? So, I wonder if it was, like, uppercut fashion, down Y or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Because uh, I, I didn't play it long. I just played those couple matches and yeah. I won pretty quick. So, mm-hmm. you know, no you big know. deal. Yeah. Um, the other thing is only two characters. Yes. Um, that was one of the big upsets as they're ch- they were changing around the formula. They're, they're saying it's just a way to introduce new people to play the game, um, which... What does that mean? Uh, It's just supposed to be easier. So instead of worrying about three characters, now you only have to worry about two. But it's not like only one person got three characters. Everyone has three characters. I know. That's what I... I don't know. That's what they... Anytime a big... A sequel has a big gameplay change, they always say it's for new players. Yeah. It's just always the thing to go to, which, I mean, regardless... Plus, like, it's been... What new players... I know. I mean, not that there won't be, but it's like the game's been around forever at this point. Yeah, everyone knows what Marvel vs. Capcom is. Like, well, maybe not everybody, but a good chunk. And yeah. anybody who's going to get it will get it regardless, whether or not there's right, three right. or two. But um, yeah, I'm not sure why yeah, the change. That's a good point. It's not like that's the draw. Yeah, it's like, like oh, two characters. Now I'll get it. Yeah, now I can't wait. Uh, but like I said, they that's see weird. it. Uh, people will see it and be like, oh, I can handle two characters. I may not be the best gamer, but I can mm. handle two characters. I guess if that's a thing, um, I mean, I was kind of bummed because... Yeah, there's that's such a... It's great to have three characters because the, yeah. the matches are longer because now you have three people to work with. Um, it felt short. It yeah, really did, the, I bet it the did. match that I played. Um, when you lost as one character, did the other character jump in or did mm-hmm. it... Okay. Yeah, same deal. Okay, cool. Um, and how did it feel? Um... I got to play it more. It mm-hmm. didn't feel as smooth, um, but I don't want to say that as a judgment. It yeah. just felt different. It is the demo, so you do have to factor that in. Yeah. Um, but even so, they want to have one of the best possible products it when didn't, they do the demo. Yeah, so. it didn't feel as fast. Okay. So let me say that, because, I mean, 3 felt so fast-paced oh, with the launching insane. and everything. Yeah. Like, it was crazy. Um, this one felt a little bit more tame. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't quite say it's like Mortal Kombat or anything. But, yeah, I um, mean, you can even tell with the colors, it looks like they're taking a different approach. C- yeah. Yeah, if you compare it to 3 to Infinite, it's, it's like... It's not as bright. It's yeah. not as, like, yeah, vibrant. Looks, yeah, exactly. It doesn't look like a comic book. It looks more like a video game. Right, and um, I think we discussed how they're trying to go all, like, movie characters from Marvel. Yeah, they're taking a cinematic universe approach. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm... It's Marvel vs. Capcom, so I'll definitely get it. Um, but I am—I'm definitely taking a step back mm. off the hype train because I feel like I don't want to get my hopes too much. Story mode super exciting, yeah. Because I'm glad to see that these characters will have like voices and have a story. Yeah, right, right. Um, Mega Man's back. 
Yes, Mega Man's back. That's awesome. I'm not and, mad about and that. There's, yeah, there's a solid amount of characters. Um, there's a few. Uh, there was an extra guy from Darkstalkers that was announced a little recently. I saw that. Uh, um, it's that. I think it's that vampire guy with the brown hair. The oh, okay. Sits with his arms crossed. Yeah. And he's always. I forgot his name, but you guys know I never know any names anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> I only remember faces. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but he was announced, so I'm just. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, the same as you said, I'm obviously going to play it and stuff mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm stoked about it happening, mm-hmm. but, um, the two character thing, I just wasn't too amped on. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a bummer, especially cause I liked putting together like a team, you know, I liked being like, oh, I'm going to do all Avengers or all street fighter right. or all, um, X force or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you couldn't really do that. So that's, yeah. that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. When it's two people, it's just like, oh, let's have this duo attack yeah yeah i I, I mean (laughs) let's have this duo attack. oh yeah that's my favorite i was trying to find a character list but yeah i mean we probably won't get an official one until the game's out or a little before um there's obviously people are gonna be like here's what we know so far um let's see Uh, i think nemesis is coming back too which is pretty cool yeah we've got morgan from dark stalkers chun lee captain america spider-man jill valentine oh jill Dorm- oh wait a second that seems uh, like oh wait here we go here we okay. go here we go yeah. i got this you ready, I'm ready. no here I'm, we go. I'm on the boat uh, uh see this is from july 20th so what is that uh well we're august yeah so it's relatively recently yeah uh, i don't think any of things been announced since then so is it one of those where you had to go from page to uh, page? oh is it because that'll take forever all right we got black panther mm. captain america captain marvel doctor strange gamora hawkeye hulk Iron Man, Nova, Rocket Raccoon, Spider-Man, Thanos, Thor, Ultron. Who Ultron is who you fight in the demo. Oh cool. By the way. Does yep. he kick your butt? Um he didn't kick mine. Oh uh, Arthur, Chris Redfield, nice. Chun Li. Dante? Dante. Okay, good. Yep. Uh, I saw him show up in the demo. Mm-hmm. Frank West. Uh oh, Jeddah Doma. That's the guy that's from um dark stalkers oh so it's not the guy it's not the vampire guy i'm actually not familiar with this dude Mm -hmm. um i guess he's a powerful demon that seeks to restore order to the demonic dimension of makai by any means possible sounds like a good guy to me yeah mega man x yeah uh mike hager he's the dude from uh streets of final fight oh i tried you were close (laughs) or hagar i don't know hagar uh morgan she's the one from dark stalkers nathan spencer from um commando bionic commando, bionic commando. Oh, why is he coming back i don't know wow, wow. Just, i guess he's a staple in wow, the capcom wow. i don't know nemesis staple. is back dead whatever um zero so we got mega man and zero oh, that's which cool. pretty cool yeah That'd they be... did had a uh, they each had their own different fighting styles so mm-hmm. it, it would make sense yeah uh ryu mm-hmm. and uh strider oh yeah Oh, and Sigma. Um, oh, that's uh, the Mega Nemesis Man. from Mega Man X. X, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> those are 30 characters that we have confirmed so far. That's pretty good. Pretty solid list. Yeah. Um, Definitely room for DLC and more characters to right. unlock and or be announced. So. Plus. Are we done in games? No, I have something else to talk about. Oh, yeah, I do too, actually. I never think Sonic music would get me as irritated as it does. I guess he found a way to spite me. Um, so there's this new game that got announced recently. It is called Comedy Night. Okay. So this is uh, it's only going to be available on Steam as of right now. It's like a work in progress type of game. Um, and the idea is <laughs> it's terrifying. So what you do, uh, you play depending on what you want to do. You can either be the stand up comic or someone in the audience. Um, but basically, you have to do a live comedy show to other people around the internet. So you, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, imagine this: you're sitting in your room, you put on a headset, and you have to do a comedy routine in front of thirty to you know three hundred virtual people listening to your show. So, what? <laughs> and then, so it's a game you can play, and then uh, in the crowd, you can heckle, you can uh, you know laugh. You, you hit buttons. Yeah, but you all have microphones too. Uh, but there will be moments where you can talk uh, at like. So if you want to heckle, you press the heckle button and then Dude, you start heckling what? the guy. 
it sounds horrifying. Yeah. So you, uh, there's not, I mean, there's not too much to it other than you choose to be, you know, the comedian or the, in the crowd uh, when you play. And then from there you do your routine and then people vote if you were funny or not. And that's it. But it's like, it's a way to practice comedy in with real people. All right. Just in a virtual space. All right. Can they see you? No, I think it's all audio. You're, you just go into this character. So here's my question. Yes. Are you going to do it? No. You're not? I thought of you. That's the only reason I would bring it up. You wouldn't do it? No way. Okay, because uh, yeah, that's actually... I'm thinking about it. I've done. I've only done two comedy sets ever, mm-hmm. and I feel like it would almost be harder to do it without actually seeing people. Yeah, I guess because you wouldn't... At least from my knowledge, you wouldn't have their reaction. Yeah, other than you can't wh- really gauge. Like, Yeah. I guess they press the button to laugh if they laughed in real life. And then from there. So then like I would have to picture a live audience anyways to actually perform it. I guess so. Mind. But people are actually listening to you. You would yeah, know. Yeah. But if I mean where I'm just in my room. Yeah. I mean, it, I think that's a better substitute than you doing it in front of a mirror or your family. Sure. Sure. It is. But it's just an interesting like I guess it is good practice because I would just I just practice my sets in my car mm-hmm. and then I would listen back on my voice recorder and then laugh at yourself i'd be like ah, 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 brilliant that's a hilarious guy great joke sir oh yes um but it just seems weird because a lot of it's about the setting right you know and you mean? are you're in like a club like a comedy club basically that is so strange it's such a weird thing. so when does it come out uh i i don't think there was a release date um, so it's no. called Comedy Night. Comedy Night, yeah, it's on, on it's on Steam, um, and it's uh, one of the green light projects. So they're going to be adding new features. So maybe they will add face cams and like VR. I bet it would be an awesome VR game. Because you if would, you because you'd put on the helmet and then or not the helmet, the headset. So then you would be seeing through the eyes of that comedian, right? Yeah, I guess. As, and then although you'd still be looking at all virtual people. That could be fun, though. It could, yeah. If you get reactions, like if people hit laugh and that impacts what the crowd's doing, that could be cool. Yeah. That is uh, so interesting. But you could also get a room full of trolls and everyone heckles you the That's whole time. That's going to happen for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because um, I, I don't know if there's any way to determine who gets That's the, the scary crowd. part. Because those people who show up in a troll mindset, mm-hmm. they're like convinced that they're not going to be made to laugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? So from the beginning, so it's, like, it's like... Right, you're doomed. Yeah. Whereas if you go out to like a comedy night and perform, people are going hoping to laugh. Right, exactly. So you right. already have the advantage there. You just need to like not suck awful. Right. So I don't know, man. That's interesting. It's I, a very cool concept. I would try it. It is yeah. a cool concept. And the VR thing is an interesting thought because that's we're getting closer and closer to experiencing re, re, like reality virtually. Yeah. Like, you know, like <laughs> actual real life situations. Yeah. It could even get to a point where, like, what if you open a comedy bar one day and instead of comedians having to come out, they just put on the headset at home. People oh. are in the bar, like, watching the comedian. That's a crazy idea. Just saying. It's, it's getting weird. You could perform in California from New Hampshire. That is so weird. Super weird, Because they would just have a robot or, I don't know, anything mm. do, the, do the voice. I mean, one of the most irreplaceable experiences is live performance. Yeah. So, I don't... I mean, that'll never... I don't think that can ever be really replaced. Right, because there are a lot of comedy routines do involve like the people moving yeah. around and being animated and seeing their reactions sure. on their face. Um, so, Or think of like a music performance. Like Some musicians are utilizing things like Facebook Live for interesting experiences, mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm going to perform this song or whatever. Yeah. But, and people do look up concerts or live videos on YouTube and stuff from shows. Mm -hmm. But that'll never replace actually going to the show. Because if there was no one at those shows in the videos, Mm -hmm. nobody would care. Right, exactly. Um, Somebody's got to be at the show to film it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. It's interesting. It's all just figuring out how to use the new technology. That's the really interesting thing to me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm very interested in in seeing how that works. Yeah. Um, We'll have to stay, stay up to date on when that's coming out and stuff. Yeah, I, it could be. That would be a hilarious much. Let's Play to do. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed the entire time. I just, I couldn't even think of a routine. <sighs> you have one, so you can just use that. You're good. Um, uh, I would just do knock-knock jokes the whole time. <laughs> we could do that. <gasps> That'd oh be great. My gosh, so if we do, dude. A, do a Let's Play, yeah. we have a wheel, and it says the type of jokes we have to do. So and so for the let's play, we just have to do whatever. So knock knock jokes, you know, uh, 
bad jokes. I don't know. I bar jokes. Bar like jokes. Like guy walks into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, um, stereotypical jokes. Yeah, yeah. What's the deal with airline food? You know? Dad jokes. <laughs> oh my god, that's great. It'd be pretty great. We a million dollars, Sony, give it to us. Speaking of, for what? We're not in movies, but Emoji Movie. I didn't see it. Kay. Has one of the worst ratings I've ever seen for a really? movie. Twelve per, uh, twelve meta score. Mm. Considered the fourth worst movie of all time. Have you seen it? No. You just said I haven't seen it. Yeah, that's just uh, what is... I'm curious. Statistically... Because true. it seems like it should be terrible. Yes. But it's like, is it... But there's like people... Like James Corden's in it. It's not like a completely... Patrick Stewart's in it. There's, I mean, there is a good cast, but I don't know. I don't is know. it that bad or is it just like they're rating it as what it probably... You're saying like a lot of people are like, like people are just going to expect a movie called the emoji movie to be bad. Like mm-hmm. I actually heard an interview with James Corden and he, he, uh, talked about, Oh, which one of the emojis was it? He, he talked about the emoji that he played in his story arc and mm-hmm. him explaining it made me laugh. I was like, Oh my God, that's hilarious. Who does he play? The broken um, emoji? Like the, the one with the thumb or whatever? No, I or think it doesn't have a thumb. Oh, was it? I the think, hand. I think he's like, um, He's one of the faces, I want to say. Is he the cookie? <laughs> I'll find it. Um, so it's got just a terrible score. Yeah, yeah, you can look at it. I think it was 12 meta score last time I checked. Oh, yeah, he's he's the high five. The high five, yeah. Um, <laughs> but this is like official reviewers. So the meta score doesn't, you know, uh, it's not people. It's actual reviewers. Are right. Getting super low reviews. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, the cast is... Crazy man, the comedians in it: T.J. Miller, James Corden, Anna Faris, Maya Rudolph, Stephen Wright, Jennifer Coolidge, Patrick Stewart, mm-hmm. Christina Aguilera. All right, <laughs> all right. Sophia Vergara, she's awesome. Mm-hmm. Rachel Ray what? plays spam. There's oh. a spam emoji. I guess there is. Sean Hayes. I wonder if they invented some for the movie. <laughs> Maybe that'd be <laughs> funny. Um, so I don't know that. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's funny. I there is a chance that I'll end up seeing it at some point because of kids. my kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm. Uh, I gotta say, I love T.J. Miller. Yeah, I'm morbidly curious. Yeah, it's like because <laughs> I know it's gonna be bad, but I, I don't know. Animated movies are not traditionally horrible. Like uh, there aren't many that I've seen. <laughs> What the first user review on IMDb is titled <laughs> "Cancer Incarnate." Wow! Holy crap! Please, anyone reading this, do not go out and spend money on this quote-unquote film. Jeez, that's rough. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm just curious if it is as bad as everyone says it is, or just everyone's on the "it's so bad" train to begin with. Right, right. Um, but we don't um, know until we see it. I guess. Oof! It didn't quite break even at the box office. Really? I thought. At least with kids, it'd do good, but... Not quite. Uh, Well, that's unfortunate. You know what I'm seeing this Friday? What? The Nut Job 2. Why? Because your kids want to see it. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait. Sorry about that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the first one, so maybe i got to watch that. Oh, I'll have yeah. a full in-depth review next of the podcast. Nut job. <laughs> nut job. The Nut Job We used to two. talk about that at, uh, when I worked at Bull Moose. Cause the Nut Job? Yeah, because Nut Job came out one week, and we were like, what is this? What? you got to just put it on the shelf. And we just kept we kept making up like synopsis for it. <laughs> like, nut Job. <laughs> Something about a squirrel. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. But it is about a squirrel. Yes. And this is a sequel. Two. Nut Job 2. All right. Nut jab. Nut jab. That's how I imagine you say it. Yeah. All right. One more quick thing in games. Yeah. I know I've talked about this a few times. Uh-huh. Again, I'm in recap mode today. Uh-huh. But um, I'm still playing Assassin's Creed Chronicles China. Stop playing I'm this sorry. game. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. But something cool just happened the other day. At this point. I got. I know. Well, I'm like a little over halfway through uh-huh. or whatever. But it's just cool <laughs> because <laughs> it's just a side scroller. I know. It feels so lame. Nope. But the side scrolling aspect is actually like they utilize it more throughout the game than mm-hmm. I thought they would. And the only reason I've been talking about it on and off for so long is because I won't play it for a long time and <laughs> I'll start playing it again. But I want um, you to beat evil within so bad. Yeah, I really need to. I just haven't I, the, all the times I've had to play lately. have been like half hour here and there throughout the day. Right. So this is like the perfect game for me to pick up and beat a little bit of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just uh, upgraded so that I can do jump kills and slide kills. Oh, nice. And it is so satisfying because there are a couple like speed sections where you know everything's catching on fire behind yeah, you. Yeah, and it's chasing you. Yeah, and you got to run <laughs> and there's guys and as long as they're not turned to you, 
you can jump and stab him in the back or you can slide under him and kill him. Yep. And it just makes the game like so much better. That Those scenes specifically are the best scenes of the They're game. They're so because good. It's like you have the fire chase and you you have the enemies. But once it's like Vector, you know, that feeling of yes. everything being real smooth, real yeah. fast. You're like, this is awesome. Exactly. You just and, keep going. And when you nail it, it's like, this is flawless. I yeah. love that. Oh, it's the best. And then there was one that I did where it ends with one of the, um, uh, what's it called? The, when you jump. Leap of faith. The leap of faith. Yeah. <laughs> so you're running, you're sliding, you yep. jump and kill a few guys, you're jumping over things, you're sliding under things, and then it ends with a leap of faith yeah. and you jump off of a ship. And it was like, oh, and the ship explodes. Yes. It? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Oh, it has so to. great. Mm-hmm. So that's all. I just the game. It, it because you know you play it for a little while and you're like, man, this is gonna get old. But yep. they do add some things along the way. Yeah. Those like, chase right. sequences really like when they showed up. I was like, yeah. this is. You're sweet. like, oh, do I have more of these to look forward yeah. to? Because I'll play a little bit longer. Yeah. Just to get to that point. Yeah. So. It's pretty fun. So mm-hmm. that's all. That's all. I probably won't bring up the game again until I beat it. Until you beat it. And then I'll just say I beat it and I started something else. Yeah. Anyways. Um, that's all I got in games. Me too. Um, I, do you have anything else? I don't think so. I actually don't either. <laughs> um, <laughs> holy Christmas. Is that it? Holy Christmas. Um, well, let me take this opportunity to thank our patrons um, because we have some patrons and you guys are the best. You've been You're with us best. for a while and... Um, what do we have going on the YouTube channel right now? Videos. Do we have new ones up? Uh, I'm still doing the vodcast. We haven't. We're not caught up on vodcast yet? Not yet. Do we have anything else up yet? Um, no. Okay. So <laughs> we have, I just didn't know how to phrase this. Right. <laughs> we have, um, some new stuff like in the bank that we're yes. going to start, start rolling out soon. Yeah. We basically just have to pick a day at this point. I know. Yeah. I don't know when to do it, mm-hmm. but I'm stoked. We got oh, the... You know. Oh, I know. It's so great. I'm not happy about it. What? The the one. Oh, that. That. Oh, I wasn't even talking about that. <laughs> um, ugh, yeah. Ugh. Um, yeah. So we got some new stuff coming out on the uh, the channel, and it yep. feels like was this a quick one? No, I think we're like an hour and thirty minutes. Really? In. Yeah. Wow. It felt kind of fast. Time flies when you're having um, fun. Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. So follow us on Instagram, um, just to keep up. And we haven't been using the Twitter at all, but uh, find us on Facebook <laughs> for now to keep up yep. and uh, SoundCloud and subscribe on iTunes. Uh, mm-hmm. Leave us reviews. If you haven't yet, please leave us a review. Yes, It'll absolutely. Be greatly, greatly appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, Follow us on our new YouTube channel as well. It's well, I mean, it's not really new anymore, but it's a keep up VE. So it's newer. It's to me, it's new until we have thousands of subscribers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot, a very good chunk of our subscribers haven't transitioned over. Yeah. Um, but I guess we don't really have, uh, it's all vodcast right now. We're mm-hmm. working towards other stuff. Yes. But, we have some varied content coming out soon, but if you guys want to make that transition over, you'll be seeing two new vodcasts every week. Uh, not new. Well, two vodcasts until I catch up to where we are. Yeah, yeah. The last one I posted was, I believe, 56, our Wonder Woman one. So Oh, sweet. I'm almost there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tim's got a lot of editing to I do. I do. I'm Everyone lazy. be patient with Tim. <laughs> um, but yeah, transition over there if you could, or yep. if you haven't um, subscribed on any of our channels yet, go do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find our older videos at the Keep Up um, Archives. Mm-hmm. That's the other channel that we had. That was our old channel. It's got a ton of various videos, but we decided to kind of like change up our format a little bit yeah we had some weird things with the channel anyways that uh made it difficult for us for our videos to get out there to people so yeah that was, that was frustrating yeah so that was the whole reason we started the new channel yeah but. we just decided to bite the bullet mm-hmm. um but thank you guys for listening to the podcast always I, again find us on youtube we'll be there with some new videos soon we want to interact with you guys on there mm-hmm. um i think oh did you say the name of it the keep up ve yeah the keep up ve all right cool it's the keep up ve if nobody knew the keep up ve it's uh the keep up V E to keep up V E. Yes. The, uh, the T H E space K E E P space, the letter V no space E. You forgot the, the letter up. E. You didn't spell up. So I just did the keep V E. The keep V E. <laughs> it's not the keep V. It's the keep V. So it's the T H E space K E E P space U P space V space. No space. No space. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Almost amazing. Did it. Um, I whatever <laughs> love, love you guys we'll see you um, wow you just said episode after our conversation about oh my love, gosh you're right I mean you could really love them I really do I uh you know and I'll say it on my deathbed you know what's interesting it has different oh 
This is crazy. <laughs> I just tripped his whole. It's kind of blowing my mind. Well, because I agree with you that it's overused, but maybe it's a matter of who you say it to. Slash intention. Like we get, I think people get really focused on language versus intention, mm-hmm. which is difficult, and that's why everyone's always offended by everything. And like language is really touchy. There are mm-hmm. some things that it makes sense. Like yeah, don't say that. But then there are other things where people get angry at you for saying something and you're like, well, can't you figure out what I'm trying to say and not just assume I'm being a jerk? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So same thing with love. They're like different. So you think it depends on person to person? I don't know. Maybe. Like, I feel like it's cool. Like if I play a show, right? Yeah. The show goes really, really well. Sometimes I'll be like, I love you guys. Right. Because you really enjoyed the audience. Yeah, and what I'm I'm like super appreciative. Mm-hmm. I don't know those people individually, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty stoked that they're pretty stoked. So if you say it to a bunch of people, mm. as opposed to saying it to one individual, could it maybe person, be situational? I guess so. Like when when someone receives an award, mm-hmm. right? Let's pick someone. Denzel Washington yes. receives a, an award. It says, "I love you guys. I love my fans. Mm-hmm. Without you, there would be no Denzel Washington." Right. Is that legitimized? Because of his appreciation I for mean, those I mean, he really does appreciate yeah. them because he is where he is because of those fans. So let's say we have thousands of fans someday. Right. I know that's not a huge number, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of people. I mean, I'd be stoked. I I'm would. just saying thousands nowadays yeah. in the digital market is still like... Wah, wah. I know, but that'd be... That'd be, that'd be sweet. Dope. Um, Where are we going with Would that? you say... I love our fans. And then if you met one in person, would you hug them and feel love for them? I'd hug them, but I don't think I'd share the love. Because at this point, I've made my stance. So I can't go back on it. Right. Unless they're really hot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Your love might be a little too conditional, Tim. Sometimes unconditional is the conditional. (laughs) That was nothing. Wait until the thunder of rebellion comes so i'm sticking with it i love you guys i'll see you later i appreciate you guys as far as i can go unless someone kills me soon or weakens me to the point of death okay you all right there this is this is the lift up because it's, it's on yeah what if you get killed and you don't know you're not on your deathbed you just get killed then i have letters ready it's not as good in a letter you guys ever receive a letter That isn't really a letter, though. You open it up, and it's full of bloat flies, and you're like, why is this full of deadly flies? Uh, And then, you know, you start crying, and you're like, I didn't want flies in the mail. Um, A bloat fly, I believe, is from Fallout, and it is a big, fat fly. Maybe it's a real fly. Can you fly without flying? Like, if you're in a plane, are you flying there? You're not flying, though. You're in the air. But you're not the one flying it. Is it considered flying? Am I just saying flying a lot? (sighs) I just... I can't even babble correctly when there's marble stinks. This is the worst day of my life. Do you think Sonic remembers going to the marble zone? Do you think... Do you? Audio, audio, ooh, ooh, audio, audio, ba, ba, ba. Let's listen to the audio track. Let's go audio, audio back. Oh, yeah, this is whack. Can't stop rhyming because I'm on track. Ooh, snap. That's it. (laughs) 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 Oh, shoot.